Welcome to my desert home. Yep. So, uh, please subscribe and and click that uh, that bell looking icon for notifications. And um, always check the description below the video because then you might get a little bit more information about the clips that I put in there and also any any mistakes I made in the Bible study I'll try to correct them there okay thank you for watching hey what are you guys doing when I came out here earlier I was going to pick up that those paper plates I put the eggs on. But that white kitten was chowing down and with the what was stuck to the plate. And then the uh, big cats chased her away before I could start recording. So now she's getting a drink of water. And uh the other the two gray ones are over there playing underneath that ladder. Well okay. The, well, I guess, uh, I guess the little white kitty's taking a taste for the eggs. It's just a, a matter of getting at them. <laughs> yeah. Well, look what I found. And it's pretty close to the tent where the cats live in a little cat house. I don't want to get any sh shadow on that. That is definitely some kind of predator scat. Possibly coyote, I would say. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, If that's what's, what happened to Shaggy or not. But uh, that is obviously predator scat. Coyote poop. I think I found out where the coyote got in. Right there. Look at that. I saw that scat yesterday. Today's Friday. And I, I saw that scat yesterday, waited till today, because when I saw it, it was in the evening, kind of dark. But anyhow, that's where he got in, right there. I'm going to throw some rock under my gate. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to, uh, there's a lot of eggs here, because I didn't eat yesterday's eggs. And I only... Only got, well, yesterday morning's eggs that I would have ate in the morning is what I'm trying to say. Because then, uh, of course, I, I gathered the eggs in the evening. And I only got four eggs, but they were big eggs. Four big eggs. But these are all the smaller eggs from the day before. Anyhow, come on, you guys. Come on. They're going to be happy to have all these eggs. I don't mind. I don't mind giving them up to the cats. They're my friends. Look at, look at little, ki little white kitty. And that, that's, that's a little gray kitty. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was actually able to count four kittens. Two gray kittens without white feet and one gray kitten with white feet and of course that little whitey over there yeah and also that uh, that old Stanley little vacuum cleaner there who that's the white foot one and the other gray one back there yeah, yeah. she wants me to catch that white-footed one but he's 
he's fast. He's, he's actually pretty small, but he's fast. And anyhow, that vacuum cleaner was down on the ground, and that water bowl was on the ground with only maybe that much water in it. Like a, that's about a inch and a half. Anyhow, um, I don't know what kind of animal could have knocked it off and not had it spill because we've had cows come in here before and they always wind up spilling the water. Anyhow, whatever came in last night knocked the vacuum cleaner down and uh, managed to get the water down without spilling it. And uh, I'm just I'm just unplugging these heat tape things that I got wrapped around yeah, the um, oh, all the water lines, and I'm gonna unplug this one one-handed. Oh no! Ah, excuse me. I've got to do this two-handed, and uh, ooh, it's a tight fit there. Anyhow. Don't want them to, to have ice in the morning. <laughs> and I, I don't want the uh, water lines to freeze. Anyhow, even though I got this one to the uh, trailer with the water turned off, I'm plugging it in anyhow, just, just in case. Because sometimes this thing, I think, is dripping. It could be dripping in here, too. I don't know. But there was a big plug of ice in there a few mornings ago. That's why I started plugging the uh, heat tapes in. Okay, so something came in here last night. Something big enough. And clever enough to knock the water down and uh, I think that is coyote poop I don't know what else could have done it maybe could have been a big cat like a mountain lion I'm sure there anyhow I put this big rocks here I think actually they're probably chunks of asphalt. <laughs> Anyhow, but I put them there where that animal, whatever it was, came in the night before last night to keep it out. But obviously something big got in anyhow. But I don't know what else to do because I know that dog that belongs to that ranch over there, he comes and visits us sometime and he will actually leap over this gate you know? if he can get over a coyote could probably and definitely a mountain lion could but I, I don't know anyhow I'm thinking of getting me a uh, some some gravel from the pile back back there in the back and uh, what I'm gonna do is just throw some gravel in there Here's, hey buddy, it's my butt. Hey butt, yeah, yeah. How you doing, buddy? Come on, come on. Oh, I was gonna bring him a piece of bread from the from the uh, loaf I was just finished. You know, I think maybe I'll do that later. But gotta get that gravel. Get a load of gravel. And uh, put some over there by the by the gate. I should walk around and and look for other places where that critter might have got in. But just by looking from standing here, I didn't come in under any of this fencing. Cause I got this I got this fencing right here that the guy I bought this place from must have put it up. to keep his uh, pit bulls from getting out <laughs> and uh, 
I made a gate out of it, this piece, so that they could bring equipment in to do the work around here. All that other fencing around, around about there is uh, around my property line. It's all old and probably couldn't even even keep a goat in. Anyhow, I'm kind of worried about that. I'm wondering if maybe I should get some some night vision game cameras to see what's coming in at night. And it's kind of strange that that water wound up on the ground without being spilled. Because I know the cows that have come in here have spilled it before. Yeah. What's up, my butt? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I want to go get you a piece of bread, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some gravel in that hole. Okay. Here's a, a Bible study. Um, sort of off the cuff, but not actually quite. I have some notes written down. And it's going to be about uh, apostolic greetings in the uh, New Testament. And take a look here at Philippians 1-2. Of course, I started over again. I like to go two to three times. Well, I was going three to four, and now I'm going to go two to three times through the, the books of the New Testament. And I'm starting over again for the second time in Philippians and Philippians 1 2. Let me read it. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a this is a what they would call an apostolic greeting. And uh, Paul repeats this quite a few times and so do some other apostles although not quite exactly in his same formula but close to it let us go to Romans chapter 7 and take a look hey all of these right here all of these here let me just go ahead and use the uh, all of these right here are his apostolic greetings right up to here where then we got Peter twice John twice once in his epistle and once in Revelation and Jude one time so anyhow what it, what it is is they had particular forms at that time writing the Romans had had uh, similar forms to the Greek where they would, it, uh, well, I think, well, the Romans didn't say grace, which would be in Greek chorus, but they had a particular word that they used in greetings, and it was considered good manners if you're writing a letter to start it off, if you're writing in Greek with the word chorus, which is grace. So that's, it's a, it's a it's a form of, of, of letter writing that is uh, gosh I can't even think of a word right now that's terrible uh, all I can think is stuff like liturgical and stuff but that's not the word but uh, it is a, it, I don't know why the liturgical churches don't use this as often as they do the only ones I could find online looking today on on, uh, on the internet in a search engine was uh, uh, Presbyterians sometimes use the apostolic greeting and, and and Lutherans like to use it. I don't know why the others do because it would seem to be uh, a natural for that. So anyhow, let's take a look at uh, Romans chapter 7, since that's the first time Paul uses it, he says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, 
And here it is. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now check this out. Grace was a very common greeting in Greek and of course the word peace in Hebrew would be shalom and shalom was what the the Jewish people and the Semitic peoples of course which Jews were are Semitic as we know that was what their common greeting was was to say just like Americans say hey how you doing they'd say shalom and Greeks would say Carters. So let's go back to these rough scripture references and and you see I'm not going to go through them all because Paul has about 12 of them here but first Peter, second Peter, second John, Jude and Revelation also uses a similar phrase and uh, ooh, I forgot about Daniel. Daniel, chapter three, verse thirty-one. Uh, it'd be easier just to use the this form. There you go. What? Well, I got that out of a book that was online, uh, an actual letter. So they must have been using a more, a different, uh, different Bible thing. You know, uh, okay. well, here it is. It's actually 4-1. That was probably the, uh, could be either the way that the uh, 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 Jewish people letter, uh, or, uh, number their scriptures, their verses, or it could be the Catholic version, who knows. But here it is right here in the King James Version, the Protestant version that I, I am more familiar with. Peace be multiplied unto you. So I think the next, let's see, the next one is going to be terrible too because uh, I have it down here as 626, so. Uh, and I don't see it. So, oh, here it is. It's in the verse 25. Okay, different ways of numbering things in different. Uh, different uh, sects or religions or whatever it uh, we use the same Bible but we we give them different names for the different books and we also uh, between the Jews the Catholics and the Protestants we we do things a little differently with the same <laughs> same scriptures anyhow it says here Peace be multiplied unto you. So that would be that would be the Semitic, the Jewish greeting of Shalom. Be multiplied unto you. Okay, that's terrible that that I've made that mistake. But I'm not going to stop. Let's go back to uh, let's see here. Where's the button I can use? There it is. Yeah, there you go. There we are. Now, I read online a uh, a paper written by Judith M. Liu. That's L I E U, M A P H D, who is a lecturer at King's College in London, and she wrote. Some pretty interesting stuff. I uh, only 18 pages. Of, I kind of skimmed through the stuff that was uh, written in the Greek alphabet because <laughs> uh, I am no Greek scholar. But she says the adding of grace. Oh, 
Darn it. Excuse my language. Hmm. Adding of grace to the peace distinguishes this, this uh, apostolic greeting from the Semitic forebears. The possible exception being in Galatians 6.16. Uh, well, I don't want to go too far into that, but let's take a look at it. Galatians 6, 16. Okay, so I don't know if this is something that Paul took out of his Jewish uh, background or not, but he says, he, he, well, he's talking about the uh, difference between being circumcised and relying on that for your salvation or being uncircumcised and just relying on your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for you. But he says, as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy. And mercy um, would be pretty analogous or equal to grace. So the grace is in there too. But uh, I don't think they used the word charis too much in the uh, <laughs> in the Hebrew language because it was a Greek word so grace we we uh, understand as being charis mercy uh, I, I didn't even look up the Hebrew on that so I'm not going to now just take too much time get yourself a book and look it up anyhow she says that that uh, adding the word grace in here would, would uh, be what distinguishes what we know as the uh, as the apostolic greeting oh boy where, where are we going here yeah there, there we go Oop. anyhow I'll read some other stuff she said. She says that Paul took the Semitic formula and combi combined peace with his own distinctive grace. She also says that he deliberately chose not to use the conventional Greek greeting, which would just be saying, grace but he had always grace and peace because he's combining Paul is combining the Old Testament way of greeting with the New Testament way of greeting so we always got to remember that our New Testament rests on the foundation of the Old Testament but our faith rests on the foundation of Jesus Christ anyhow it's a uh, Interesting, we can always remember that Paul was a Jew and Jesus was a Jew and all of the apostles were Jews and all the early Christians were Jews. And But Paul was the one that was, was led by the Holy Spirit to go to the Gentiles. And that's why I'm saved today because I'm a Gentile. And Paul had a lot of trouble, particularly in Galatia, with Jewish people who wanted to come in, Jewish Christians who wanted to convert the Gentiles by circumcising them and making them follow the 613 rules or laws in the Old Testament. Not just the 10 of the Ten Commandments, but 613 laws to live by in the Old Testament, and you have to be perfect about it if you want to be saved. Anyhow, enough on that. Let's go back to what she says. Okay. She said that when Jude, let's look at Jude, says, Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied, 
she says Jude essentially is imitating the Pauline form and then I'm leaving up part of that sentence and going to the end of it but doing so in his own language she goes on talking about early other early Christian writers such as Clement and Ignatius and people like that who Polycarp they wrote books that were not in included in the New Testament but after that New Testament was was formulated there was other books that they wrote because Clement Clement he was a bishop of Rome in the first century and Polycarp was a uh, he was actually a a student he knew John the writer of the Gospel of John and the book of Revelations and of course the uh, the Johannine epistles as they say in the New Testament he was Polycarp was a student of John he knew him personally so but the I have a book somewhere with those letters in it, but I'm not going to read them. I've read them before, but I'm not going to read them to you. Anyhow, you can find them. They're not that hard to find if you got the internet. Anyhow, at the uh, her, her ending paragraph, she says that Paul initiated the epistolary use of the formula, and I'm leaving out this part of the sentence there again, dot, 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 has clearly seen, is, has been clearly seen. There you go. I'm trying to read my own handwriting here. <laughs> and believe me, sometimes I can't even read my own handwriting. Anyhow, so according to a lot of people, and uh, she's got the doctorate. She's got the master's and the doctorate. And she's a lecturer on uh, early Christianity and the Jewish uh, religion in London, the King's College. So she knows better than I. But she says that Paul initiated that apostolic greeting, grace and peace to you. So, I guess that's all I'm going to say on that. Anyhow, I am going to say that Jesus Christ said to love one another. He told us to love our enemies. Paul wrote that there's three things, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these things is love. So we got to love everybody, but we got to temper our love with judgment. In other words, we got to feed some people with a long handled spoon so they don't bite our fingers. We got to be careful how we treat people, and we got to be wise enough to. Uh, step out of the way when they're charging. 